We are talking to Till Shouter and Sarah Najumi. They are back after 500 episodes. It's so great to have you guys back on every 500 episodes. Now this is, we can say this is now a, a new thing. Uh, we are so <laughs> thrilled to be back, and um, we salute you for all the work that oh, you've no, done no, it's not a matter for that. 500 episodes. That's no joke, it's Adam. Five, five, well, I can get into the whys and hows, but it's okay, you know. It, it is a little ridiculous. I don't recommend starting a podcast. However, it seems like that advice goes really unheeded because it seems like everybody now does have a podcast, right? This is all right. Can I ask you a question? You may. Who who is the audience? Who 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 listens to this? Not including my parents? Yes. And grandparents probably. I don't I don't have grandparents anymore. <laughs> I barely have parents. <laughs> but the primary audience I know are film community people. Filmmakers and that. I would say that's the majority, but I don't know. I it, today I was out in the West Village and I ran into somebody. She was feeding her dog or trying to uh, give water to a dog in her in the palm of her hand. And I reached in and I said, get one of these for like six bucks because of my you know, dog. And, and she, we started talking. And I said, and she, I said, my bag, we, I was saying how heavy my bag was. It's filled to the, I have recording equipment. She goes, why do you have a recording equipment? Are you a filmmaker? I said, no. Well, yes. But I also have a, I do a podcast, uh, you know, where I talk to people in the film world. And she goes, oh, is it that one where you interview, like, Michelle Negroponte? And, and like, yes! She oh. knew my show, and she listens to it. A stranger on the street. That's so cool. I just can't that. figure it out. And yes, I would. If you haven't noticed, we're about to turn this around and make this an interview <laughs> for you. Are there memorable no, podcasts? Like, what's your most memorable podcast? Early in the on, I was told uh, about through uh, about this couple who were making a film about this uh American basketball player who moved to who ended up getting onto this basketball team in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> he was <laughs> good one. And that good one. I don't remember good who one. they were, but I just know that I enjoyed myself thoroughly, and there was something very, very just transcendent and special about that episode. We and it, I thought I maybe I can do something with this show. We've been watching a lot of Peter uh, Pink Panther. So that's where the good one is from. Peter Sellers. Oh, yes, And then yes. the remake with Steve Martin. We've been watching oh, don't them with do our that. kids. Why would you watch the Steve Martin version? So Be- good. It's so good, yeah. Not because, we, because of this Talking Paris to- trip with Luca. Uh, oh. Where I took, uh, you have I took, a lessons uh, for your minky. I took our son to Lorette. Paris because he had a, a concert there with his orchestra. And to, to mm-hmm. get him into the mood, we wa- we needed to watch some Paris-themed movies, right? Okay. So we chose Pink Panther and oh. uh, Peter Sellers wow. and then... Yeah, and then uh, Steve Martin, Steve Martin ones are really up. well. That makes sense. You get, but when you talk, you have to talk into the mic. Yeah, I'm to trying to uh, accommodate okay. my wife and make I can sure. even do that after three oh, glasses okay. of prosecco. Good one. <laughs> um, no, see, let me just try to be professional. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A beer? That oh my gosh! A good He's one. Saying, <laughs> no, I'm having prosecco. If I have beer, all right. <laughs> I'm making an exception. I'm not okay. with Jacob. This is why. It's a little okay. <laughs> like like the host of the show. No, but it's really is. I really do love the idea of, of bringing you back, uh, Till you. and and Sarah, because you guys were there at the very beginning when it was in, when it was internet radio. It was like a. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I did, but I didn't really have the skill set of an interviewer per se. You can argue with me on that, but. I, I, but you were great. You guys made a great film there. To be honest, I think when we did the interview with the Iran job, that was after we did the uh, Kickstarter, right? Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Just right I think afterwards. I even hosted a screening, now that I think about it, right? We did a screening, like a feedback screening. Something like that. We yeah, did do I, it. Remember in that little bar in the back room? Yes, yes, yes. In, and it was in, a feedback. In Park Slope. In Park Slope. Yes. So you guys yes, were... Yes, and then yes, yes. I was at POV. I was working at POV. Yeah. It was very, did, it was very indie New York, the whole thing. It I was. Remember. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I liked yeah, the yeah. whole trajectory of that film. Yeah. Thank you. Because yeah, yeah, that in and of itself was a story. You guys did an true. outstanding it's, job of raising true. money for thank it through you, Kickstarter. It was an early Kickstarter success. There's no arguing about that, at least in the film component. Actually, it, it, it is still one of the most successful documentaries of all time. Because I bet. We, we raised uh, 170. That's incredible. And, and, and yeah, and, for a documentary, but, but the right? starter goal was what? 
uh, the starting 50 or 100 was 50. 50. 50. That's, and then that's, we doubled that, right. and then we did a yeah, second man. campaign for the release. So it's remarkable you yeah. guys did. So I, yeah. I Thank you. Back. Of course you can. And I'm going to just take that same amount. Oh, sure. Because <laughs> it's cracked there. Thank for you. those of you wondering, this is, uh, this is the bartender coming okay. back with the drinks. Um, we were reminiscing about that whole period of time when we were uh, interconnected through that whole the Iran job when you were raising money and getting it out in the world and you know up to that point when I we ran into each other number number of times <laughs> we I want to tell the audience that we're we're at the Brooklyn Film Festival opening night and uh, we're, we run, I've run into not so coincidentally but still <laughs> It was nicely ran into. Well, we ran into each Good other, one. but we I didn't know like hours ago when we were trying to kind of coordinate when we were going to meet up that this was going to play out this way. But it was a nice series of circumstances that we were able to do this. And I was saying also that it's great bringing you guys back um, after all these years. Anyway, let's get to Reggae Boys because it's, it's the, the thing. So you, this is your, till this is your this is more your uh, your film. In the sense no, of direction, Sarah actually, produced, not, right? Yeah, not at all, though, because okay, um, this film had a weird trajectory. It, uh, it was originally a uh, commission. Somebody commissioned oh. me. Oh, that makes sense. And this brings me back, or brings us back, to the Iran job. Some somebody like an investor here in New York named Brian Bidal, who is not really in film, but more in other industries, sure, including sure, sure. sports, saw the Iran job. Loved it, and he said, "Why don't you do something like that with the Jamaican national soccer team?" In other words, where a bad team oh. all of a sudden becomes a contender, and we go into like underdog. A, we come, story. we go into kind of like a, a you know foreign place and experience sure. a culture. And and I said, "Sure, I mean, who doesn't want to go to Jamaica? You know, it was pretty well funded in the beginning." His dream was that the team would actually qualify for the World Cup and that we right. would then all sit on... Did he have a sense that this was the timing was really good for that possibility? No. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> I, I told him, I'm German, I know a little bit about soccer, soccer so right. I told or him football, the likelihood of Jamaica making it to the World Cup is very slim. slim to none. So let's focus it on other things, like the incredible uh, cultural contributions that Jamaica makes to the world. Right, music. and so you like reggae and music in general. So, right. But so you're bringing your um, experience and know-how, and trying to also reason with him in a sense of right. Let's let's lower, not necessarily lower, but let's set, you know, expectations. Right. Well, exactly. I want uh, manage expectations, but manage, I also yeah. appreciated. Uh, you know, I appreciated his enthusiasm. I appreciated the whole crazy sort of betting on this underdog team making it I, I and their I, name is the, that team the the Jamaican national football team which okay. is the reggae boys the reggae called boys. the reggae oh, boys oh, so that's their name so anyway so we had so. like we had six trips to Jamaica we uh -huh. we we filmed them when they played all these CONCACAF teams yes. Mexico the US Costa Rica like really good teams it was super exciting great shoot the day that the team was mathematically disqualified the money stopped flowing from the investor, right? And did you so anticipate that could possibly happen? Did yeah. anybody suggest? I mean, we did, but then on the other hand, it was it was not insignificant. It was a, a pretty significant amount of cash that he had put into it. So we right. we didn't it almost like why we would didn't he stop? necessarily expect that he would yeah. just shelve it, right? Right. right. But that's kind of what happened. He's just like, okay, they're not going to the World Cup. I'm going to just take this as a loss, and that's that, right? And then write this it is, off. Right. Somebody modestly is, wealthy would do would not do that, but somebody very wealthy might. Well, he's not. It's, this is a company, you know. Oh. He's, oh, he's, okay. This is not just an. It's an. It's, it's, it's a businessman. So he he probably took a pretty, uh, you know, calculated sort of analysis. What what are the chances of this film making it? What what what's in it for me if I put more money in it? And he said, "Let me just leave it at this." Cut his right? losses. And this is where. Sarah comes in because she really she said she looked at the footage mm -hmm. and she saw the footage and she said this is really special what we have here this I've never seen anything like that so colorful so vibrant the characters and mm -hmm. we've got to somehow make this into a movie right and so then she came up with the idea to propose to Brian 
that he basically becomes a an investor we become the we become the producers um, whatever he put in becomes his share of the movie we try to raise the finishing funds and it's a partner pictures film it'll be a, become a very different film because mm -hmm. you know because where we light, put right. the focus now it's your agent or your s subject matter not his the focus then didn't have to be on just the right. sports right. angle. Right. I'm right. not even a sports fan. I, right? Right. Well, no, you made I'm really sports not. Film. And this no, I know. Is my I know. Second sports film. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but really it's funny you say every time we make a sports film, I have to explain the rules to her. She no, does. The, the, <laughs> ru the, the rules of soccer, I understand. Thank you very much. You okay. think so? <laughs> Good one. Well, the sports. Well, you know, like the Iran job is a sports film, but it's also not a sports film. Right. 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 I but, mean, but, it's but, but my, you know, it's like. When I when we looked at the footage and we saw the the sports story carries the film, you yeah. know that's the narrative that carries the film. But th there's so much more, and uh, and mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I take credit for you know seeing it being special. But then Till found some really cool editors who were able okay. to cut the film on deferred for years on their off time. Uh, German, these two German guys, um, and that really was the reason the film came to life, right? Because without them, it wouldn't have happened. And the thing is, was we were si simultaneously working on two other films that had funding, right? Oh yeah. When God Sleeps, and then another film I made in Germany for German television, and so we were uh, very thin stretched with our capacities sure. and so when basically we had three films going on at once and the two that were funded obviously had top priority right mm -hmm. whereas with reggae boys it was difficult to pitch we couldn't raise money for a long time so these two editors uh, chris zen and ramin sabeti were instrumental because like sarah they saw the footage and they said this is special let's let's not just let this go to the drain to the to the gutter and so without them we couldn't have done it and then eventually finally when we were done with the other two movies by some coincidence i had you know we had more time i had contacts to uh, the arte commissioning editors they saw the footage and then they helped us complete it so it was very very different from any other film that we've ever made mm -hmm. um was always kind of the kind of the stepchild that was going on on the periphery while we were making these other films but I'm so happy that we stuck with it and this is where you know I, I, th I don't think with, without Sarah the film would be because she sounds like it wouldn't she yeah because I was so busy with all this other stuff that I some yeah I was really sometimes close to saying just let let's let this go because it was also so well, hard Sarah to pitch. what did you see here that you that kind well, of was I mean, compelling to you yeah I saw like a romp through a country that I had ne have never been to and mm -hmm. and I felt like it was a really fun light human story mm -hmm. um, with the musicians and and everybody trying to do better in life sure, um, and right. it just felt like even though it was in Jamaica it felt like a really universal story and you know the musicians the nomads that are in the film the um, right the main guy, Sheldon Shepard, is going to be here tomorrow. Actually, he's going to be here oh, for wow, both of the screenings. Well, okay. um, you know, it's just le like a level of charisma like mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen before. And we, these editors sent us like a five-hour rough cut, mm -hmm. then a four-hour rough were they rough thinking? Cut. Oh, they, but they, they knew that it would never be anything close to f that. Yeah, no, no, I mean, no they knew that. They, but they right. were like, you know, but like they still wanted selects. you to you know, see the arc. You, know, you got to start somewhere. Right. And when yeah. these films start, that's what they are. Okay. And so even at five hours, four hours, three hours, we would look at it and we had a good time watching it. And I mean, it's like what, you know, oftentimes when you look at rough cuts, even of films where you know they're going to be great eventually, the rough cuts are so boring, right? With this film, it was it never felt like that because mm -hmm. the footage had such a vibrancy and right. the people yeah, were yeah. so, like, right. just Alive. jumped off the screen. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I, th I think what... When I was in gym, I was there six or seven times, right? And so I, when you film, when you shoot, you you sort of see that, you experience it, and sometimes you then check it off in your mind and say, okay, I've been there, done that. Sometimes it's so magical, you don't necessarily even need to then make it into a film. But for Sarah, it was different because she saw the footage that I brought back, mm -hmm. and so she sort of relived the experiences that I had there, right? Right. 
And so for her, it was like, no, 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 no. This is like, let's finish this, right? right. And that's why I'm so grateful to her. And that's why it's really well, so basically romantic. And look at this. Big love tribute. in this <laughs> yeah, podcast. Love. I yes. like to think that every time you appear on my podcast, every 500 episodes or so, that it reinvigorates or reignites the romance in your relationship. Yeah. Exactly. And then another kid pops out. Come on, enough is enough, for Pete's sake. Anyway, no. The name of the film is called Reggae Boys. It's having its Brooklyn premiere. It's a, World? It's actually the U.S. No, it's the U.S. US premiere. US premiere. See, another, Played in Germany. That's the other funny thing about this film. Or Jamaica, one of these. Because we had the finishing fronts from Germany, right? Yes. That meant that the first bro- the first theatrical release was Had in to Germany. Be in the first broadcast was oh, in Germany. Oh, it's been broadcast. So it's, it already That's ha- fantastic. Yeah, it already had this life, European in, life. in Europe, right? Very good. And That's so, wonderful. So this is now the U.S. Right. premiere. And, and by the way, the Europeans, obviously soccer is, even though it's a popular sport here, it's nothing compared to Europe or South America or the rest of the world. Or even truthfully. in the Caribbean, yeah. Of, well, anywhere in the world, I just about, except maybe Asia. No, even I, in Asia, I mean, baseball. Well, no, soccer is Soccer big. in Asia? Football? I don't All know. right. Well, soccer almost everywhere big. else in the world. Soccer is Let's argue over that everywhere. for 10 minutes. But uh, are you trying to wrap gotcha. it up? Well, w- I think we should. Okay. Yeah. Let's you guys can come. By the way, no, when I... S- but, but you guys can come on with any... You can come on with any of your projects. I don't give a shit. <laughs> what do I care? You're, you're in the inner circle now. You don't have to worry about it. You've been, you've been on every... What I wanted to episodes. say was, even in, even after the film was done, yes. even after Arte, yeah. we got the money from Arte to finish the film. Then it had its German theatrical, and then it had, and at any point in this whole process, we could have said, "All right, we're done." Like, right. like we ended up paying the editor right. something. We're done. Like, right, we right. Just You've kind met of be done. all of your obligations in a sense. Right. Except you made that, something. Right. Right. Except that we then went to a festival in the Bahamas, in the in February. Sorry about that. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Bahamas the in the February, in February, I Terrible. don't recommend it. No, no. Whatever you do, <laughs> don't book a f- trip to the Bahamas in the winter. Don't do it. So we showed it there, and the reaction, and yeah. it was, a f- again, the first time I was with an audience and got to see the reaction. Yes. And then peop- they had, like, a Jamaican-themed party afterwards, and then wow. people came up to and us And they're doing that here. And, and they were like... Hooping and hollering and like screaming sure, at the screen, sure. and I was like, you know what? Like, we yeah. can't just let this go once right. again. It's connecting with audi- <laughs> with we, with great swaths of audiences, and you got to reach right. those people. Right. They want this kind of film, so right. let's get to them. Exactly. Don't just let it drift off into the ether. Let's exactly. do something. I got you. If you're listening in, and uh, God for God forbid you aren't, <laughs> you should be heading over to the Brooklyn Film Festival. But I will put this up on the Film Wax Radio YouTube channel. Ooh. And what's nice about that is it can go up as early as this weekend. Super. And then we can plug the rest of the screenings. Because say when the that other screenings. That would be good because the it's t- tomorrow is sold out. But Tuesday. Oh, what a shame. The Tuesday. 31st. So tomorrow is June 1st. Yeah. That's, 2019. That's sold out. But Tuesday, uh, June, uh, what is it, 4th, is has plenty oh. of tickets. We'll have. It's a 1030 show. 1030 at night. At p.m. Well, yeah. you don't want to show a, a Jamaican soccer movie. At 10.30 uh, 10 30 in, the, in the morning. I kind of no, would prefer Because you get your red stripes and your rum and your this and that and the other, and you got to have a good time. Yeah. This film, though, is also really, is, it works for kids. That's what's interesting about it because it, it's, it's... When very, I said red stripe and rum, I did not mean alcohol. I meant <laughs> fruit juices, soda. You know, anyway, 10.30 p.m. Drinking. is good, and, and, and uh, we've, you know, okay. we've had sc- outdoor screenings in Germany where mm. people came with enormous amounts of uh, herbs. Yes. And that could also work for the 10.30 Chefs. screening here. Different yeah. culinary professionals D- yes. with their Different, herbs yes. and yes. spices. Parsley, mint, sage, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. things like that. Right. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I think um, we're done here. I hope you have good sound. <laughs> I hope I do. you do a I lot do. of editing. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Guys, come back on s- again, seriously. Okay. We know when we're, when we're uh, a little bit more sober. You, you know. Yeah.